Hi, beautiful Cancers. I love you guys so much. You have been so supportive and wonderful, and working with you is always a pleasure. Um, I'm so thankful, and I think you guys will understand this when I say that you know, I'm filming these in Mercury Retrograde, and it's been such a slowdown. It's such like a heavy, intense time. I've really felt it, and I've had to actually take a step back and care for myself a little bit more and, and make sure that I'm not overdoing it. I'm not pushing so hard. And so, like, coming into this reading today, like, I'm feeling pretty emotionally raw and pretty um, tense. <laughs> And I'm really happy I get to talk to you guys because I feel like this is a safe space to feel that because I think cancers, you guys push yourselves really hard as well. And you do get to a point where you burn out and you can't do it anymore and you need to go home and you need to rest and you need to take care of yourself because even though you're so great at putting that external badass front on where you get things done, like you are, you feel the world around you and you have to have those times when you go home and you take care of yourself. Now, September, and so thanks, you guys. And honestly, my friend Tiffany, who is so beautiful, who's a Taurus that is amazing, has helped me so much. She's been the person I've been on the phone with whenever I need help. She makes this jewelry that's so supportive for me, and this is amethyst and quartz and aquamarine custom made for me, along with these amethyst earrings, and they really help keep me grounded and steady. Um, please check her out. I'm going to leave her Etsy store below with the 15% promo code because she has been one of the resources and people in my life that has really helped me in this time of exhaustion. So we're in September. We're coming to the end of a kind of a big summer of retrogrades. Um, Mercury retrogrades ending on the 6th. Uh, Pluto retrogrades ending on the 28th of this coming month. And Saturn retrograde finally ended in August. So we've had some really deep life lessons over the summer. You know, the summer was really a time to pull back and look internally and reflect. And it, ha it did slow everybody down a little bit. It did make everybody a little bit more intuitive and a little bit slower. And I think for you, I'm looking at the note. It's a really short note. I didn't have, you know, I'm trying to just do more of an intuitive reading this month. Um, and the note was, you know, we're in your third house. Virgo's your third house. It's a great house to have in your, for third, you know, it's great to have Virgo in your third because that's the house of communication, the third house. And Virgo's ruled by Mercury, which is a communicator, right? So it's, it's a great energy for you. And I think what it's going to help you do is have really good communication this month and feel like there's a little bit more energy for that coming in um and that there's kind of a pickup in your ability to actively go after what you want in life actively create some new dynamics some new energies so let's look at the cards i finally got them all pulled out and here's exactly what i'm talking about right out of the gate we have eight of wands so here's that movement that movement, you know, I think a lot of you have felt kind of like you've been pulled back and been forced to hold steady and just kind of look and analyze and wait and see what good things are going to happen. And here's this like forward motion. Let's go. Let's head into the next horizon. What's over there, right? High energy here, moving on things, making things happen, shifting, experiencing things on a real material, physical level, which I think, you know, Having that earthy Virgo energy is great for everybody because it, it helps us all kind of start to actively do things in the world. And I do feel that you guys are kind of feeling that pull forward into new territory. However, it's funny because the very next card we have is the Four of Pentacles, which is kind of that holding on to your resources and holding back and saying, oh, I can't. I think last month we were talking about how you have that fresh skin and it's really t it was really tender in August and it felt kind of like a little overwhelming to have to put yourself out there and so we were talking about the slow little the little taps on the window the little the little signs that are pulling you forward right and i still feel like a little bit of you like this is so intense this fast forward rushing energy of the 8 of wands your skin is still pretty fresh and if it moves really quickly at you like this it can it can trigger a desire to feel that you need to hold on to your resources and hide out. What was I talking about? I have about burning out and then needing to go home and recollect your energy. There's a little bit of that going on here right out of the gate. And I do think that shift for you when you feel that high impact energy coming with everything going direct 
and the energy starting to shift and we're getting into a new season and things are just coming into like new focus, be aware that you're, there is a part of you that is going to kind of want to go home and hide out. Uh, because you're being you're being called into some new territory. And what I see here is like some really strong masculine energy, but also this is kind of, once again, this going forward thing. And this is an interesting combination of energies actually, because the Knight of Pentacles is all about slow movement and just kind of slow and steady wins the race. You know, he does not move on things quickly. He looks at things, he thinks about things, he sits back, he, he analyzes, maybe takes a little step forward, stops, looks, analyzes, takes another step forward, He's not in a rush <laughs> to do anything because he wants to uh, analyze risk and he's just not a rushed energy. The emperor, on the other hand, like you as a cardinal sign, represents Aries. Vision, looking to something and saying, I will make this happen. I will get this done. I will accomplish this goal. Um, he's really powerful. And I think this, for me, really encapsulates the cancer. It's funny because look at this fire and earth, fire and earth. One, both of these are the dualism that is going on for you about fast forward motion and then slowing down. And I think this is, this is kind of going to be what's interesting about this month for you all is that on the one hand, you're going to be feeling a pickup of energy where you're going to be wanting to be the emperor. You're going to be wanting to forge forward with everything you have and just make it happen. Like make this happen. We're going to do it. There's another part of you that's going to feel like just holding back a little bit. And I think what you're going to find is that if you can find a balance between these two, you actually might have a really practical way forward um, into making these shifts and changes in your life that you want to make. Because I think a lot of you, you've been ready to be in love. You've been ready to move houses. You've been ready to start that new training or that new class. And, you know, so you're raring to go, you know, you want to be doing these things, you know, you want to be coming into new energy, you know, you want to be expanding into new territory, but, and so you're, you're ready, but you also know that you can't burn your candle at both ends because you'll end up exhausted and you will end up here again, right? So this earthy energy that's mitigating it is, is reminding you to just take it, take it one day at a time. You know, you're not going to get all of your answers tomorrow. You know, you big romantics with your big hearts. I know you want to have your answers. You want to know what's going on, right? Um, but you know, it's a time to just know that this process is picking up. The speed is picking up on all of this. Your life has slowly been like with this fresh skin. It's like the momentum is building right now, right? We're in the second month of fresh skin time and the momentum is building and it is building you guys like for those of you, once again, I keep saying love and I know you guys are like, I'll believe it when I see it, but Ace of Cups in the sun, this is once again, the high intensity energy. There's a lot of high intensity energy. While we have the mitigating earthy energy of Virgo and Pluto and retrograde and Capricorn, there's this intensity going on here that is like fresh start. Let's go. Let's go. Let's move on this stuff. You know, for those of you who are falling in love, like this is the kind of thing where you jump in there and you just say, let's do this. Let's do this. The Ace of Cups is a fresh beginning in romance, in emotion, in your home life and what you're doing and how you're living. It's a beautiful card. And the sun is that creative, warm, playful, willing energy that says, yeah, everything is a great idea. Let's find out what happens. I'm just looking at them because they make me happy for you cancers because I feel like you need this. You know, you need the the encouragement of the world around you to show you that it's possible to be happy. It's possible to have fun. It's possible to be creative. And I read this in a few ways. And, and the one way I feel like, you know, for those of you who are in established relationships, here's that refresh, that energy of just feeling ooey gooey again. For those of you dating, this is that really hopeful, playful energy. For those of you who, you know, you just want to be in your social circle getting out, this is that warmth of feeling that you are surrounded by people who get you and care about you and be in your corner with you forever. Beautiful energy. And it's just generally all around a very supportive kind of vibe happening right here. So, boom. 
energy is high for you cancers like you are doing well this virgo energy is really complementary to your water and it's it's bringing you a little bit alive again but what's funny here is okay we have this ace of cups we have the sun we have the eight of wands we have the emperor we have this like all systems go let's jump into the pool you know feet first no questions asked and it's funny because it triggers this thing again with you guys and i love you guys so much you're sensitive to the world and having that much intensity coming at you can make you start to overanalyze. Here's the Nine of Wands, or the Nine of Swords, I'm sorry, the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Swords is the waking up at 2 a.m. card, I always call it. It's the, it's the card where you get really in your head and you scare yourself to the point where you can't sleep. You convince yourself things can't be going well. And, you know, this card is so much about your own personal beliefs and feelings. And when I see this card, it's always like, you know, it's just a little reminder that you might get some of this because you it can be overwhelming. It can be scary. It can be scary to believe. It can be scary to jump in feet first like this kid, you know, especially if you've had some wounds in the past. And with your water energy, the wounds you carry are, are heavy and real and they and they affect you and and I think it's normal for you to probably have a little bit of this where you say, can I trust this? Can I believe in this? Can I believe in this future? I don't know. It's okay. You'll ride through it because the last three cards are also insanely positive. The lovers, the world, and judgment. Boom. What? You guys have a really good reading this month. You have probably one of the most fun-loving creative expansive positive readings of the entire month and it's like you're in your house of communication you're ready to do this stuff you know the lover speaks for itself that ace of cups that sun that eight of wands here's the lovers like get out there and socialize is what i'm saying get out there and socialize because people are going to want to be around you this month there's something about your energy this month that is really powerful and magnetic and very strong. And yes, go home and take some rest when you need it. Absolutely. Don't ever underestimate the power and importance of that. You guys need it. But this is a month about your interpersonal relationships. This is a month about communing with others. And in doing that, you're getting close to this. You're getting close to this. Trusting this. Trust it. For those of you who are big old skeptics because it's been a long time, here you are, but you can be here anytime if you just open that gate up a little bit. And the thing is, you know, that shedding of the skin and coming out of this retrograde season, I, I do weirdly feel like, well, the thing is that Pluto is going direct in Capricorn. It's your opposite sign, so your relational sign, right? how you do relationships. And I do think with this world and judgment, like these both for me speak to Pluto, which is this guy of death and resurrection energy going direct. So you're done doing your house cleaning on the, in your, in your relational sign. There's going to be some revelations here. I think about how you sabotage yourself, you know, not to pick on you Capricorns, but, or uh, cancers, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about Pluto and Capricorn. And that made me say that. The thing with you cancers is that you are lovers and you love love and you're so good at it and you're so giving and wonderful and I love it so much. I just, I love it. I think it's the most amazing, beautiful thing. But you do have this tendency to sabotage. And these two cards are speaking to you realizing what that is, whether it's by putting up walls, really efficient walls, or by over giving of yourself so that you both burn out. And that way you're get you're set free or by not sharing your true feelings because you're scared because you don't want to be hurt because you are water and you do feel the world. There's different ways that you can all do this, right? There's, there's a million ways we can sabotage love and sabotage letting people in. And this for me, we, once again, we're in your house of communication. We're in your house of like, you know, communicating between worlds. These cards are about being reborn. These cards are about being reborn and seeing clearly and understanding what you do and how you do it. I look at, you know, the two ways you can be here 
And I think, yeah, yeah, here's a way of self-sabotaging. Waking up at night and writing up a story in your head that feels so real, right? It feels so real. And then living based on that story. Whereas here, these people are in the sunshine. They're not in the dark. They're communicating, right? And here too, you know, the world is the end of a cycle and the beginning of a new one. Judgment card is about coming up from underground and being and seeing. And this is about trust. And I think what it really is about is trusting yourself to know that you can see and sense and move on the right things. You are intuitive. You have green lights coming at you right and left. I think the biggest thing with you this month is don't second guess that ability to know because you have that ability to know and it's going to get stronger and stronger as you get into this new skin, as you get comfortable in this new world that you're at, you know, after the solar return, after this big eclipse, after the retrograde season, there's been a lot of house cleaning and a lot of internal work. And now you are here in this aha moment. And if you are paying attention, you're going to be letting a lot of light flood in. A lot of light flood in. But there's an element of trust that you guys have to have. Um, you know, that those, those scales, those spikes that you have built up to help keep you safe in this world, in this brutal world. They serve you to a certain extent. This month is going to be you sitting with those spikes and 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 assessing how much they're helping you and how much they're hindering you um, because there is a lot of love wanting to come into your life and it's up to you whether you let it in or not. I love you guys so much. So I hope the best for you. I think of the signs I've done so far, your reading is probably one of the most positive and uplifting and hopeful and forward focused readings of the entire month. So I think September is going to be really great for you. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with it. So take all this to heart. Um, check me out. I'm going to leave my website, and my email below. It might take me a couple of weeks to get an appointment set up with you, but please be patient because I really would love to work with you guys. And I do video readings. I do personal Skype readings. Um, we can work a system out together. Um, and I will leave Pink Loon's info, believe me, she is amazing. If you need some stones that are just healing and positive in your life, she does an amazing job. Um, and she will work with you. Seriously, one of the best people ever. Uh, check her out. I will leave all of that in the description box. Sending you all my love, my Cancers, and I will see you in October.